Let's keep your expectations realistic for this video. Doing the realism challenge with 12 colored pencils is not going to be easy. But do keep in mind that when people do the realism challenge, they use everything at their disposal. Mark Crilly is the master of the realism challenge. People use gouache for shadows and they use hundreds of different colored pencils. Just using 12 colored pencils is going to be very difficult to pull it off. But that's what this video is going to attempt. And it may not be perfect as a result, especially because I am not good at realism. Every time I attempt it, it goes horribly, horribly wrong. But I also learned a bit from the last and first and only other time I did the realism challenge. I picked something too small. I picked something grayscale. I think it would be easier, but the problem it was reflective so that the highlights were brighter than the white paper I was working on. It just wasn't good. So this time, having learned from those mistakes, I'm going to go a little larger, a little more colourful. These art materials, the sketchbook that I'll be using today, and these 12 beautiful polychromos colour pencils. Say it 20 times as fast as you can. Polychromos colour pencil. Poly polychromos. Polychromos colour pencil. That's really hard to do. <laughs> These are two of the incredible art supply lineup in the Jazz's Jazzy Art Box. The sale of this box will never happen again, and sales end on the 31st of July. So if you want the Jazz's Jazzy Art Box, you need to go check it out. Now. If you want to know what's in the box, I'll link in the card and in the description to the video where I share everything that's in the box and why I picked it for the box. It goes into great detail. You can check it out there. If you want to know what people think of the box, I'll link to the video where I react to people's reactions to the box and it has a whole bunch of videos where people unbox it and share their thoughts. And if you want to know the people who make the box with me and know how it's put together and where it comes from, I'll link to the video where I go visit the people who made it over at Smart Art. But I really want to take time today to have a bit of fun with the sketchbook and the pencils. These are some of the heroes of Jazz's Jazzy Art Box. These are top notch. I love this so much. I know for a fact that these are fantastic. I literally have been hearing so much about this sketchbook recently. One of my new favorite kind of sketchbooks. This is a very nice sketchbook. So there you go. You don't have to take my word for it. People love these things. I love these things. That's why they're in the box. And if you want to get them as well as all of the other amazing goodies, you can go check out Jazz's Jazzy Art Box for a very very limited time now that sales are going to end. Let's get to the realism challenge. So how this is going to work is I'm going to open this up and I'm going to have two sides of the page. And the challenge involves setting down a 3D object on one side over here on the left and then replicating that on the right. In order to get the best things to try and replicate, I of course raided my children's baby toy box because I wanted a variety of colors. Uh, that's got like a lot of complex shadow work. So I don't know if I'd do something like that. I like the spider. I thought if I did that well, that could look really cool. This, what's this? This is a like a teething toy. See how I touch it and like things move quite drastically. Like if the highlights change, Ugh, I can't let it move. In fact, I should pin like the book down with blue tack. That feels pretty solid. I don't think that's going anywhere. <sighs> what are our other options? We've got some uh, Play-Doh cutting tools. This is like the, the baby version of a mobile phone. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's got a real mix of primary colors. It's a clean, simple shape, clean, simple shadows, but a lot of gradients and uh, a lot of different blends and transitions. Oh my God. My heart is actually starting to race. This is going to be really difficult. Oh boy. All right, let's do it. This is the one I'm going to do. The Bright Stars Baby Phone Toy. I'm going to rotate this because I don't want to draw the complexity of the elephant or the cat. Something like that. <laughs> All right, so I'm set up and my hope is by the end of the following time lapse, I will have here what you see here. I don't think it'll be perfect, but I'm going to take my time and do the best I can. I am scared, especially because every other time I've done this, I've failed miserably. <coughs> Wish me luck. I have to say this challenge was really, really hard and most intimidating at the beginning. I tried to use the pencil and roughly sort of measure sections, but it's not entirely accurate. I just had to do my best. On top of that, you don't even draw from the perspective of what you're seeing. You're actually drawing from what you see on the camera display. I mean, think about what you're looking at. That's the perspective of the camera and I'm copying that. Therefore, I'm not actually watching the paper as I draw. I'm looking at the screen. So all of your measuring and proportions isn't based on the object itself. It's based on the lens of the camera and how it shows in the video. So it's quite an awkward drawing process, but I just took my time, chucked on an audio book and tried to enjoy it and soak it in, but was also as picky as I could possibly be.
Moving on to the colouring was a relief after all that meticulous sketching as I slowly built up the colours, careful to leave the highlight areas clean and white. I realised very quickly it was going to take a lot of saturated colour to look solid. But the thing with coloured pencils is there's only so much it'll erase, so when you put it down really heavily, there's no way you can fully erase it to the point that it's gone. So then it became a matter of really slowly building up the drawing and constantly watching the object I was trying to replicate to make sure I didn't take any of the colour or shading too far. You might think that there really wasn't any colour blending needed. Even though I'm only using 12 colours, the toy I'm replicating is so primary coloured and simple that surely those 12 colours cover it all. Now for the blue that's mostly true and some of the orange, but overall there was a lot of blending to try and get the exact hues I was seeing. For example the green wasn't just green, there was a hint of yellow in the lighter areas, there was a touch of blue in the shadows, and the orange was a mix of orange, red and yellow. The purple was the trickiest by far as I didn't have a colour close to that in my base 12 colours. So it was a mix of a mauve, a blue and a red, and I slowly mixed them all until I came close enough to the colour that I saw on the object. Next and towards the end came the shadow. This was quite tricky but also the most satisfying bit because out of everything it was the thing that really made what I was drawing look three dimensional and also the thing that most clearly showed what I was copying was the object on the left. As with all of the other colours and values it was a matter of very slowly building it up but I actually did get most of my shadows done with the mechanical pencil grey lead as it was much lighter than the black and also smudged nicely to produce a soft transition to the pure white. And after that I built up the deeper sections of shadow and ambient occlusion with the black pencil. Last but not least I used the white gel pen to add that final polish and shine to my painstaking attempt at realism. And there it is, that is the result of my realism challenge. This is, uh, look, okay. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but uh, I am really happy with the way this turned out. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn close. And I think, I think, yeah, there we go. Even more realistic. If you watch this video and you need to wear glasses in general, but you forgot to wear your glasses, it's probably looked picture perfect the whole way through. But the funnest part of doing the realism challenge like this is the warp in perspective. I'm gonna use my phone to capture the top and then twist. It's most interesting when you turn the angle. Look at that. Whoa, that's sort of trippy. We're going two-dimensional and then we're going back to our three-dimensional replication. I'm pretty happy with that. Before I finish, I do wanna do one thing that I've never done before. I have never unboxed Jazz's Jazzy Art Box and I want to do that today simply because I've never done it. I know it sounds like I will have done it, obviously. I put the whole box together, organized all the supplies, I even displayed them all beautifully when I first released it and promoted it to you guys, but I never received the box. And uh, when I went to visit the Smart Art offices, I asked if I could have a box. And now that the box is going to finish selling forever and I'm not ever really gonna promote it on the channel ever again, I'm never gonna have another chance to do this. So I want to do this with you guys. This is it, my little thank you card to anyone who gets the box and all of the supplies in the box. This is the artwork that comes with the box, the signed in print artwork. Here we have the fabulous Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. One of the true heroes of the box. As you can see, the colours of these pencils go down so damn well. My custom Spectrum Noir markers, huge shout out of course to Crafters Companion or Spectrum Noir for doing the custom packaging and letting me pick the exact colours I wanted. We have the Marabu Graphics fine liners. These are fantastic. We have three different fine liner sizes and then one brush. Now I'm a huge brush pen fan. That's why there are three kinds of brush pens in the box so if you like inking or if you want to learn to or have a bit of fun with it there's a lot of fun to be had here. I love this thing because it's like it's really sharp and fine you can do a lot of detail but it's technically a bit of a brush pen you can really get a little bit of uh, line weight variation in there but it's almost like a plastic tip so you can really do a lot of work with it really solidly really sharp and fine like look how fine you can get this is a brush pen and I don't have to worry about you know losing detail but I can also get a 
a lot of that line weight variation. It's a gorgeous pen, really love it. With the Prismacolor Color Erase Pencil, I love this for construction work. My favorite mechanical pencil, I'm obsessed with mechanical pencils, but I'm also really picky, so I love this thing. We have the Express It Blending Card. Again, this was extra, but this is the same type of card that I use for pretty much all of my feature final illustrations in like character design sessions and stuff. We have my pencil case. This is the thing I take with me and travel everywhere. I have it packed like this. It's missing a couple of things I've been using in this video, but that's that. And then of course we have the Hannah Mule sketchbook. This is an amazing sketchbook. I mean, you can see how I use it in this video. And if you're interested to see how people use any and all of these art supplies, go check out the hashtag Jazzy Art Box. I really love hardcover sketchbooks. They just obviously feel like they're gonna last a lot longer and they feel really premium in the hand. I, I am just in love with how all this came together. And I'm so grateful for everyone who supported the box, for the partners over at Smart Art who made this possible and has sent it out to everyone. It really worked hard to get the best suppliers to work with and send me samples and have a lot of patience with how picky I can be. This is a weirdly like bittersweet moment for me because this is the last video where I'm gonna be shouting it out and, and thanking you guys for getting it. But really at the end of the day and after all that, it's just one of those amazing things that I'm just so grateful to have been able to do with you guys and for you guys and you know it just really highlights how special this community is and, and the amount of awesome stuff we get to do together and how fun art and creativity is so this is it jazz's jazzy art box i want to thank you so much for watching this video and also for making things like the jazzy art box possible by being such an awesome community and supporting it so much and showing so much love with the hashtag and just with your positivity even people who didn't get the box sharing their creativity or their suggestions or their encouragement it's all just been such an overwhelmingly amazing positive experience. So I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for making this possible. I, I've talked about it a lot. I'm finding I'm struggling to stop talking about it because it's the last time I'm talking about it with you guys. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for watching this video and until next time, I'll see you later.